Have you ever wondered how pumpkin spice flavoring became the de facto flavor of fall? Yeah, yeah me neither. I mean, pumpkin is not the only vegetable or fruit that matures during the autumn season. There are plenty of other good candidates, such as apples and apple cider, cranberries, turkey gravy. So why, among all these candidates, is pumpkin the number one go-to? Well, let's discuss it, whether you want me to or not. I'm Johnny from Morton Ivy, and this is the history of pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice refers to the blending of three traditional dessert spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves, with the occasional addition of ginger and or actual pumpkin flavoring. Starbucks created the PSL, as it is affectionately called, in the fall of 2003 as a means to replicate the success of holiday favorites the eggnog latte and the peppermint mocha. It was released the following year, to much acclaim. What started as a fun, tasty autumn treat spilled out of control and became a full-fledged cultural mainstay of the season, practically a way of life, and has since become a tongue-in-cheek synonym with suburban white girl culture commonly referred to as, well, well, well I'm sure you've heard it. <laughs> synonym, 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 cinnamon, synonym, cinnamon, synonym, cinnamon, say that five, ten times five. no. Many other coffee franchises have created similar drinks before and since the Seattle-based giant's introduction of the fall drink. Fun fact, Starbucks didn't actually include pumpkin as an ingredient to the beverage until 2015. But the story goes back further, much further. In fact, as many as 3,500 years earlier, or at least in part, researchers have found pottery shards in Indonesia that contain residual amounts of nutmeg, one of the leading spices in pumpkin spice. This is 2,000 years earlier than originally thought. Nutmeg and other spices became invaluable commodities throughout the century since then, lending to the spice trade that exploded in medieval Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and North Africa. Silk Road? More like Spice Road. The region of Indonesia these nutmeg-dusted ceramic bits were discovered is known as the Banda Islands, which in the 1300s CE would become known as part of the Spice Islands for some several hundred years. Said University of Toronto economics professor Emeritus John Monroe, at one point in the 1300s when tariffs were at their highest, a pound of nutmeg in Europe cost seven fattened oxen and was a more valuable commodity than gold. And you thought five dollars for a hot cup was unreasonable. Synonym has been in use even longer than nutmeg, known to have been popular in ancient Egypt some 4,000 plus years ago. Synonym became an especially popular condiment in classic Rome, where before the advent of nutmeg or pumpkins in Europe was used to season oysters. Now try putting that in a latte. I mean, I, I try it. I, I have adventurous tastes. The word pumpkin originates from the Greek word pipon, meaning large melon. This became pompon via the French, pompion thanks to the British, and then finally pumpkin by the early American colonists. The Irish and Scottish tradition of jack-o'-lanterns had originally involved turnips, onions, and or other roundish root vegetables. 19th century Americans, some possibly of Scots or Irish or Scots-Irish stock, adapted the tradition to the winter gourd native to the Americas. While it is not the only fruit or vegetable that matures come early autumn, the pumpkin and its accompanied spices have become synonymous with the season thanks in part to its role in early American agriculture and the very popular pumpkin pie's place on the Thanksgiving holiday table. <laughs> very popular pumpkin spice place. <laughs> Nowadays, pumpkin, pumpkin spice, and pumpkin pie flavored, scented, themed products explode in number every fall. Products range from Glade plugins to even pumpkin spice candy corn and Cheerios. Trader Joe's stocks more than 70 pumpkin y products each fall, with that number rising steadily. In, in, in fact, why bother telling you when I can show you?
And now we get to the part where you've all been waiting for, where I show you how to make your own pumpkin spice latte. Now, for this, we're gonna be using an old school percolator style coffee maker. Now, if you have a drip coffee maker, you can adapt the recipe to use it as such. Um, if you have a Keurig, I would just straight up avoid using that because, well, they sell pumpkin spice latte cups for that and there's really no need to follow these instructions. But for the, for the percolator, it gives it that really rich coffee taste that you can't get uh, outside of an espresso machine. If you have an espresso machine, well, good for you, I don't. So this is the way I do it and I'm gonna show you how. Now you will wanna go ahead and line the grounds reservoir with a coffee filter so that no beans get in the mix. And then what I've done right here is I've gone ahead and pre-roasted my grounds uh, just so that they get the extra burnt flavor as Starbucks is famous for. Uh, you'll really want it to have it smoky like a, like a hobo's campfire. So, you know, if that's not good enough for you, definitely add some liquid smoke or whatever smoky barbecue ingredients you have. For this, I'm using French roast grounds. Uh, I would prefer that if it's best you're trying to emulate what Starbucks does. And then you're going to go ahead and take that after roasting and just go ahead and put it right in the reservoir. Yeah, there's about four ounces there too. Four ounces of French roast coffee grounds. Isn't that right, Falafel? Then go ahead and fill the percolator with about 40 ounces of cold, clean water. Next, we will want to add our seasonings. First up, a tablespoon of cinnamon. And if you're working with just a regular old spoon, this is about a teaspoon, so three of these. I couldn't find my measuring spoon, so bear with me. One. Two. Three. Next, one teaspoon of nutmeg. One. And then half a teaspoon of cloves. And lastly, just a dash of ginger. Just a sprinkle. One, two. We don't want too gingery, we want it to taste like pumpkin spice and not uh, curry. And finally, here we have some pumpkin puree. If you have pumpkin pie filling, that works just as well. And if you have some leftover pumpkin pie, just scoop up some of that and that works good too. Now you may think we're already done, but in fact, we're only halfway there. This is, now we add the meaningful agreements, but really give it that, that fall taste, that basic pumpkin spice taste familiar to every white girl in this lovely country. First, you wanna add the used sock of a white girl, uh, preferably between the ages of 18 and 25. I know that seems racist, but if you really want that flavor, uh, Caucasian is the way to go. Uh, next, a hair tie you found in a CVS parking lot. Uh, scrunchies will work, you'll get the same effect, but in this case, we have a hair tie, and if there's a couple extra loose hairs on there belonging to some stranger, uh, even better. And then after that, we have a Taylor Swift CD. Just go ahead and crack that baby in half. Oh God, ah, there we go. So it fits in there just like that, and that'll get you that really extra autumn flavor. Also, we have some, uh, some birth control, some Adderall, and uh, a tell of Molly, as you will. And if you really want to give it that extra Florida kick, I would suggest using about a shot and a half of Fireball Whiskey. And it goes. Just set the reservoir in there like that. Put on the top. Plug it in, and then we play the waiting game. Be sure to serve it with some warm cream, room temperature is fine, and about a teaspoon of honey.
Another choice to make it extra autumn is some maple syrup. Or try to avoid that granulated sugar or that high fructose corn syrup. Now, for the test, how does it taste? <sighs> now that is the flavor of fall. Bone apple tea. I've been Johnny. You're always welcome in my neck of the woods.